Can you kill your add-ons? Well, here's the frustrating part out of the way first. You'll probably never be able to play World of Warcraft optimally without add-ons because they are just too damn powerful. But that was never really Blizzard's goal with Dragonflight. Their goal was just to make the default WoW experience a hell of a lot better. All the same, they did some damn good work. They've added a lot of features that we wanted since all the way back in vanilla. So instead of a UI that is completely devoid of add-ons, the question today is perhaps more along the lines of, can you drop Bartender, Elf UI, or even Weak Auras? And with a few sacrifices, yes. Unlike today's sponsor, Glasses USA. I need glasses, right? Shopping for them though usually sucks and is expensive. Normally, not with Glasses USA. By cutting out the middleman, they offer prescription glasses at up to 70% off. And if you click my link below, you will get a great offer and free shipping. Now, for me, it's kind of hard to know what glasses work, right? I just don't have the intuition for it. So their virtual mirror comes in there. Uh, using that with their massive range was a hell of a lot easier than showing up in a shop, trying on a few pairs with a very limited range and just not really knowing where I'm at. Plus, they've got an app that scans your current glasses and tells you your prescription, which uh, is kind of magic. Now, my eyes have changed a bit for the worse, sadly, so I've got these. These are awesome. I love rimless glasses as uh, as a daily driver, so that's what these are for me. Sometimes though, you do perhaps want a bit of a stronger brow bar. So I've also got these and also these guys. Tell you what, really big lenses gives you a great field of view being covered by them, which is awesome. And you know what? I, uh, I couldn't resist it. I couldn't resist it. Some uh, prescription aviators. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't not. So glassesusa.com, they're the place to go for glasses, right? It's just that simple. You'll get a special offer using my link in the description down below. The whole thing is risk-free with a 100% money back guarantee. So thank you to Glasses USA for uh, upping my glasses game and sponsoring the channel. And with that said, let's go. So the new UI is mostly comprised of two parts. Number one, a visual redesign. Number two, a bunch of new features. The visual redesign looks familiar enough in color and shape, so it still is World of Warcraft, but yeah, it's notably modern, and I think to many it will look a lot nicer. So pretty minor upgrade visually, but it's one that's been long overdue. The real meat of this is what actually matters the most, though, and that is uh, usability. Actual features, what's happened there? Well, basically, you can move just about everything wherever you want. Uh, most of the effort has been put into action bars, where you can now have rows and columns, change the size, change the padding, reduce the number of buttons, and even have them hide based on being in combat or out of combat. So your mountain toys can stop, I don't know, bugging you mid-raid or something, and you can have a nice clean screen to enjoy the sights. Or... Almost, at least. Uh, there are a few gripes and a few missed opportunities that we do have to talk about as well. Now, one of the most overlooked things so far has actually been the new option for buffs and debuffs. Now, as anyone will tell you, this game is more about buff and debuff tracking than about anything else, uh, but the default place the game put buffs was way up in Narnia. Now, though, you can change their size and you can actually move buffs which is great. And uh, then there's this peculiar new arrow that basically acts as a soft filter. Uh, it removes buffs with long or infinite durations, uh, even things like food and flasks. So instead of needing weak ores to track individual buffs um, somewhere where you can actually see them, you can just use this. It's not perfect, but it does work, sort of. The one thing we basically won't talk about in this video is nameplates, and that's really unfortunate. Blizzard have made no real notable changes to nameplates, so yeah, you'll kind of still need Plater and a pretty good profile to just have the optimal experience that highlights the important information amongst the massive noise of info that is just thrown at you with uh, Mythic Plus trash pool, so that's a bit unfortunate. With all these features in mind then, 
Let's see if you still need an action bar replacement add-on or weak aura. And uh, no prizes for guessing the answer. Our first example then, the Bare Necessities. This is for players who want as close to a vanilla experience as is possible aesthetically, but who still want to raid and feel like they're playing the game, you know, not at a big disadvantage. So, that means getting your ability cooldowns and your buffs a bit closer to the center of the screen um, without blocking your view. It means making sure that your health bar, uh, you know, and your peripheral vision, uh, leaving some room for things you know you're going to need, like DPM, fight weak auras, and details, because, yeah, we're all sweaty DPS people at the end of the day. And doing a dungeon with this one does highlight a few issues, some of which are bugs, some of which are just issues that using add-ons completely fix fixes. Uh, look at the state of this area. The overlap between the old, from Legion, uh, personal resource display and where we've placed our buff bar. If you watch closely, you'll see there is a difference in what buffs are being displayed. This then immediately leaves us between a rock and a hard place for how useful this is. Option one is of course to just rely on the personal resource display which was this thing that was added in Legion and then wasn't really developed further, which was a mistake. Uh, there are new options in the menu, which imply that it's been updated, but in testing, it still shows the bare minimum of buffs. As an example, it doesn't show active potion duration, personal defensives, or a number of important procs, like the uh, rat talent, the proc Sephirim, or a divine purpose, or a relentless inquisitor. That means that you're going to be missing out on some important information. So basically, the personal resource display is a good idea in theory, but it's just not good enough to be relied on for proper gameplay, and to boot, it's stuck floating around your character, a different place depending on where your camera is, which is fine. This does have the capacity to look quite clean, but it's also hard to design with a UI where you've moved other things, so why Blizzard haven't just let us have a locked screen space, or not screen space, but like a, a locked position for this as a toggle? Ah, I don't know. So yeah, this is left ultimately not working particularly well, which is a shame. Option two then, remove the personal resource display from the equation. Doing so frees up this part of the screen for your buffs and your debuffs, but it also means that your health and your power are going to be over your player frame, which is now a little bit further away. Now, combo points and holy power can take these options to have them be displayed on your target, but with energy, well, you don't have that option, so you're shit out of luck. Uh, but for anyone else, it's starting to shape up here. Your keybinds and cooldowns are there, you, uh, you know, you and your target are more in view, and most importantly, you can see and mouse over every buff and debuff, so you actually have the information that you need. It's messy, but it technically works, and this is all possible without an add-on. That's good. There are some downsides, though. Once you start getting covered in heal over time spells and externals during a raid, it's going to be harder to see what buffs actually matter, and depending on your spec, you might be covered in a bunch of stuff that you just don't give a shit about, um, so that signal to noise ratio will uh, not help you play well. The lack then of specific customization and unique positioning for buttons also does make this feel very blocky, uh, leaving the middle of your screen feeling too crowded. So, question one, can you play without action bar replacement add-ons and without weak auras to track your important class information? The answer here is a rather flimsy yes. You can play reasonably well with that stuff, and with a few tweaks to DBM and details, you can get an aesthetic that is very Warcraft. It just, unfortunately, is really far from feeling complete, meaning it's hard to recommend playing the game like this unless you've got a specific reason. But uh, that doesn't mean it's all for nothing. This example is what we're all really here for. It's heavily reliant on weak auras and using someone like Athenar or Luxthros's uh, sort of pre-made setups, but it's the perfect example of what the whole UI overhaul is actually good for. And that's 
something I'd recommend actually giving a try, at least uh, for a while during pre-patch. One of the biggest trends in WoW UI is just to let weak auras handle all your spec stuff, but the rest of things like action bar positioning, that's entirely up to you. So if you're willing to do that, then this new UI uh, basically does almost everything that it needs to. You'll be able to move and hide action bars, remove ugly parts, and uh, honestly, the new player and target frames look uh, better than add-on setups that I've seen. This might be a bit controversial, but I've always thought that while LVUI uh, works very well, I also think that it does not visually mesh with how the rest of the game looks. Uh, the Smash Bros. director actually released a uh, neat little UI video called Clarity vs. Style uh, lately, and he kind of went through a few examples, including Persona 5 and Minecraft. Um, I think ultimately saying that Clarity and Style are both important and can be contradictory. With these UI changes, the new frames and some well-considered weak ores lets you actually get a nice combination of the two. You can have the textures, borders, and icons that create the style that's recognizably Warcraft, but the layout uh, changes and weak aura stuff, that gets you the clarity that you need to actually see what's going on. To put it simply, you cannot beat what a good weak aura setup does for you. Yeah, it, it's just not that good. But you can, at least now, support making that setup that will involve weak auras without a bunch of extra add-ons. So here's what uh, our take on that is. With bars made small just for reference and for binding, and some bars hiding in and out of combat for a maximally clean interface. And with a nice DBM and detail setup with the right textures and fonts, it actually does start to look really, really good in combat. And theoretically, it'll get even better during questing and world gameplay with add-ons like Immersion, maybe using Dynamic Cam if that's your kind of thing. Uh, we did try to test things out, but sadly Immersion has not been updated yet. The downside, though, is that you lose a bunch of extra customization that you get with using LVUI and a genuinely massive amount of very handy little features but you can get a add-on that just kind of operates in the background called Leatrix Plus. That will handle most of the really important quality of life things, and once you have it set up, you won't even notice that it's there. So as much as there are confusing and underbaked features with a version of the UI overhaul that will be shipping with Dragonflight, I think you do have to keep your mind on how the devs probably know they'll never be able to stop people using weak ores. And actually, as we'll get into in a future video, right now, Weak Auras is a saving grace uh, for the game. And uh, I think the developers probably know that. Uh, maybe, and we'll get into that in a future video because World of Warcraft has massive UX issues. Uh, anyway, maybe, just maybe, their goal was a bit more along the lines of, this will be good for players who don't know any better, who just log into an upgrade, and for the rest of us, Maybe it's them knowing that weak auras is ideal, so people are going to use that. Let's not try to completely replace that, which uh, does make sense because weak auras, it just doesn't make sense as like a first party feature, but you do just end up with this really weird uh, arms race. So assuming a few nasty bugs get ironed out like buff tooltips being wrong when filtered, and we get a few more things be, you know, updated, like some truly ancient textures that still exist, uh, this overhaul revamp thing is a success. It's a limited success, but the hope is that they can build on this into the future. Right now, playing WoW and Dragonflight with this setup will likely feel a lot different than doing the default of installing LVUI and just wiping away a little bit of the game's character with it. Because look at Elf. Doesn't look like a fantasy game. It's as simple as that, really, and I know that is so many people's main issue with it. Uh, the ability to import and share layouts with the new default Blizzard system also means that we can even build ones for you once pre-patch comes up and send them to you. And then all you'll need to do is just plonk in the weak auras for your class and you'll be golden. So to answer the question, you can't really play Dragonflight ideally without add-ons. And you definitely cannot play optimally without add-ons like Weak Ores and Plater. But Blizzard are a lot closer than they were before. And for the first time, you'll be able to drop Elf or even Bartender and actually feel kind of good about it.
This also hopefully is extensible because at this rate, maybe by the time we hit 11.0, the UI may also be a hell of a lot better. Like everything else, this expansion is the first step on a long path, one that's all about foundations, and with this, their feet are pretty solidly planted. So, thanks for watching, uh, look forward to our breakdown of WoW's UX, which will be coming out soon, and we'll see you next time.